Hey, I wanted to make a video. There's lots of videos out there to confuse you if you're new to pool chemistry. Um, yeah, I, I've watched ones that I just shake my head and, and I'm like, so I want to try to do one that's trying to get pool chemistry uh, for people that are new is to kind of help you hone in on what's the most important. Um, I'll give you the levels of the stuff where it's supposed to be balanced and then also kind of tell you what are, what are the things that you need to really hone in on and it's the pH and the free chlorine. Those two things are the most essential things to balance in your pool. There are other things that you can balance um, but those are the two th critical things to keep balanced in your pool uh, so that it stays clear and, and doesn't turn green on you. Okay, the pH. The pH, you need to balance that around 7.2. That's what you want to do. 7.0 to 7.2, that's where you want the pH to be. How do you bring, if the pH is high, you bring it back down towards 7.2 with adding muriatic acid by adding muriatic acid to the pool. If it is too low, uh, if you, you know, if you go down to 6.8 or 7.0, it's okay, especially if you're in an area where your pH uh, coming out of the tap water is high. Because as you add water, or if you're using a salt cell, it will also raise your pH level as it does its work each week. And so you do want to, uh, you know, don't worry about it too much if you get to 6.8 or 7.0 because it's going to come back up just by you adding water or the salt cell doing its job. You want to be on the low end, 7.0 to 7.2, sort of your target range for your pH. If you bottom all the way out to like a 6.2 or something, okay, that's too low. You, there's specific stuff called pH increaser that you can put in the pool to bring your pH back up. Your free chlorine. Don't worry about your combined chlorine or your total chlorine. You know, that's just stuff for people in the pool store to argue with you about or talk about. Your free chlorine is basically the available troops that are, are able to go into the fight to kill contaminants. So your free chlorine, what's available? You need a residual in the pool so that whenever new contaminants get in the pool, that's what kills the stuff is the chlorine. So your free chlorine, keep it around a three. It's okay if you go on up to a three to a five, like in Texas here. Uh, in the summertime, we shoot a little bit higher and we keep the pools at about a five. I have my technician, technicians keep it about a five. And everything's working fine because the, a pool's an unnatural body of water. You want it to, the chlorine is what keeps it clear. So that's what's happening. You've got to have chlorine in it or else your pool's going to start turning green, especially in the summer. In the winter, it's easy. A little bit of chlorine goes a long ways in the winter. It's real easy to keep it about a three, um, but it's okay if it's a five as well. But anyway, keep it about a three. That's what commercial pools usually keep their uh, free chlorine at is a three. Uh, and in the summer, if you want to go a little bit higher, no problem. Uh, usually, people do not have any problems with sensitivity for a 3 to 5 free chlorine range, unless you're really sensitive to chlorine. And then if you are, then you probably are going to switch to like a saltwater pool. That's a more natural type chlorine uh, instead of a, a man-made chlorine. Next is your alkalinity. Uh, that uh, 80 to 100 is the range. Uh, I use test strips that, that test that. But really, alkalinity is a buffer for the pH. So as the pH goes up, the alkalinity goes up. It kind of mirrors it. And then as, the, uh, as, the, as you add muriatic acid to bring the pH down, the alkalinity will come down. If for some reason something happens to your pool and your alkalinity really bottoms out and it's like a zero, there is an alkalinity increaser that you can put in there to increase your alkalinity specifically to get it in range but generally, that is not something that you're going to worry about on a weekly basis. It's stabilizer or cyanuric acid, CYA is what it's abbreviated as on test strips or bottles. Uh, you, have, you have to have some in there. Its purpose is to shield the chlorine from sun burn off in the summer. Not really that much of a concern in the winter because we don't have as much uh, straight sun. 
but definitely you want to make sure that you have some in your pool uh, for uh, before you go into the summer. And you have to have at least a 30 to a 50 is 30 is sort of the minimum range that you have to have it. There's a note, uh, you know, just be aware that your cyanuric acid levels, if you use a dichlor type shock, a chlorine shock, it has stabilizer in it. And so it will continue to increase your stabilizer level, especially if you're shocking the pool a lot with a dichlor mixture as opposed to a calcium hypochlorite shock. So don't worry about it. I've tested pools before that had a 300 level of cyanuric acid and nothing's gonna blow up. It's okay. Nobody's skin's gonna fall off. Uh, somebody called me whenever they uh, took a sample, a water sample in and the cyanuric acid was uh, tested the pool store said, oh my goodness, you, you're uh, somewhere over 100, you're probably experiencing chlorine lock, meaning that your cyanuric acid is bound to your cl free chlorine so that it can't actually work. That's incorrect. You don't have to worry about the cyanuric acid level being high. Your free chlorine still works. I have pools right now that we care for that the cyanuric, uh, that I took from another, you know, that took over from another company. They continue to use dichlor mixture and so their uh, cyanuric acid levels are like at 300. Everything's working fine. No, nothing's blowing up. Nothing's happening to the cyanuric acid level. You're not experiencing chlorine lock. In my years of experience with pools, I've ever only seen one true example of chlorine lock. And it was a green pool. I dumped a whole 25-pound bucket of uh, of chlorine in and it did nothing. Didn't bubble, nothing turned white, it did nothing. And that was chlorine lock because cyanuric acid level was over a 500 and it did absolutely nothing to the green pool. That was chlorine lock. Other than that, most all of the time that I have ever heard from a pool store saying that a customer is experiencing chlorine lock, it's because other factors are happening to their pool and then I go out to the pool and then see that their, their chlorine's out of balance, their, their pH is out of balance, so the, the free chlorine can't be the most uh, effective or potent that it can be. Uh, or they're not actually adding enough shock. You know, they're adding one or two pounds and you've got active algae growing all over the pool. That did nothing. You know, you've got to really double or triple the amount of chlorine that you're putting in if you have active algae that's growing. Last thing is calcium. Uh, calcium is a part of balancing the water in the pool. Um, I usually recommend, you, you can get a specific, some test strips, uh, you know, test it. The colors for the test strips are hard for me to distinguish because they're just not very, it, it, it's hard for me to distinguish. So I do not use test strips that test calcium level. I use a dropper kit that tests a specific cal the specific calcium level. So you can get just a dropper kit that tests it, or you can take it into a pool store. They usually will test the calcium level with you when uh, for you uh, when they they test the water sample for you. Um, I recommend you test that twice a year. So at the beginning of the swimming season, maybe April May then go ahead and test the, have take a water sample into a pool store, have them test it for you, see if you need to add any calcium. And then, um, and then at the end of the swimming season, before you go into the rest of the year, uh, then uh, test it then as well. So maybe September, October, and then put some calcium in to balance it if you need it. That's not something that you're going to need to deal with on a weekly basis is your calcium level. This is what calcium does in the water. It helps protect the plaster from the water being out of balance and trying to pull the calcium out of the uh, gun, uh, out of the plaster pool. If you're in a vinyl pool, above ground pool, uh, you do not have to worry about the calcium level because there's not a concern of calcium being drawn out of the vinyl because it can't happen. Uh, so you don't really even need to worry about the calcium level in a above ground pool or a uh, uh, you know, a vinyl liner pool, uh, just in uh, plaster pools. Uh, these are the test strips that I use. Um, 
And so there are plenty of other test strips. These are reliable. I have found that, so I use them. I have my technicians use these specific ones. Uh, you can get them online. And so it tests a free chlorine pH alkalinity and stabilizer. So I'm not, I'm not really worrying about the alkalinity on a weekly basis. A stabilizer, we do test it. Um, you know, seeing it just has a little color chart right here on the back. And then, uh, so see, like, you know, it tests the cyanuric acid up to 300. It's going to test your alkalinity. But really, the top two, uh, you just read the instructions on the bottle. You dip it in sideways. Don't shake it off. You have a little bead on each of the little pads on the test strip. And then you just, you, you basically are just going to put it right here above. You put the test strip right here above the, the colors and then wait about 10 seconds and then you're taking sort of a snapshot of what the colors are for the free chlorine and the pH. And these are the test strips that I use um, and we keep the pools in balance and keep them going. So um, that's, that's my video to try to help simplify what you need to check on at least a weekly basis is the pH and the free chlorine. You also need to run the pump enough so uh, in hotter areas, you're going to run the pump at least, uh, you know, 8 to 12 hours a day. Uh, if you have temperate climates, you can get away with less than that. But you really just need to run the pump um, as much as you need to for your particular pool. Uh, and then also balance your chemicals. Uh, and then that is basically the, the main things that you need to do to keep your, uh, your pool in good shape. If you, have, we'll, if you have any questions, you can certainly comment, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please share, like, and subscribe.